Today we're going to talk about the quick way to install Clipper with the Raspberry Pi 4 and the Octopus Max EZ version 1.0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this real quick. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to load it with Raspbian Imager. So first thing that we need to do is actually take the drive and insert the USB card for this. And then I'll show you how to image it real quick. So I'm gonna insert it in the computer and then I'll show you this setup. So inside Raspbian Imager, what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose the storage, which is gonna be our USB SD card that's inserted in the computer, then we're going to choose the OS and we're going to go for other specific purpose OS, then 3D printing. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose in this case main sale OS. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to select the 64 bit version and then I'm going to write. So then I'm going to say yes. And this is going to run for a couple of minutes writing and then verifying. So I'm going to pause the video for a couple of minutes and then we'll come back. Okay, now it's almost completely verified after writing. So we're going to have a message in a moment that it's complete. So as you can see now, it's now finished imaging the drive. So we're going to click continue. Now I'm going to pop out the actual drive. And then I have to place it back in the computer. So back on the computer, we're going to have a little bit of a situation with our actual drive. So you're going to see this. You can click cancel and you may see a second one. So let's take a look here. Let me pull it over so you can see it. And then we'll go to our actual file folder. So our file folder is going to be right here for boot. At the very bottom, you'll see that there's a WPA underscore supplicant dot config dot example. So you're going to right click on this and you're going to rename it. So I'm going to take off the example part with the dot, press enter and change the name. Then I'm going to right click on it again and I'm going to edit with notepad. So inside here, what we need to do is we need to put the router name that you're working with. So this would be router name and then the router password that you're using to connect to your actual network. So we'll say router password and that's all you need to do. So I'm going to do this off camera. And now that that's complete, what we'll need to do is actually put this in the drive on our Raspberry Pi. So let me grab that on the desktop. So I'll pull out the drive. I'll take it out of here. I'll flip the Raspberry Pi, Pi over and I'll place the drive inside of here. Now I'm gonna put it on the table probably a little bit away from here, maybe like this or probably down like this so that I can get to this in a second. So let me lock it on the table so it doesn't slide around on you. And then what I'm going to do is show you after we get this configured how this is going to work. So let me put it right here. I'm going to put in the actual monitor so you can see what's going on and I'm going to plug this in. So when I plug this in I'm going to switch over to the other screen on the desktop so you can see this. So here we go. So that's plugged in and we're going to watch it boot here. It's going to be a little shaky because of the way that I'm presenting it. So we'll give this a second to boot. It's probably going to have to do some changes to the drive. Not all of them I know off the top of my head but I'll describe like the SSH is secure shell. That's actually a file that's created on your drive. So it allows you to communicate remotely with your Raspberry Pi. And I believe it's uh, bullseye is the operating system version, but I could be incorrect. 
So let's get this second to actually boot up and I'm going to show you something down at the bottom here. There will be a section that hopefully will tell us what the IP address will be. So let's give this a second and see what happens. If we've done the router name and password correctly, I believe we'll see that. So let's give it a moment more. And what you can see is it says 192.168.1.2. And that's going to be the address we're going to use in our web browser. So let's go over to the computer now and give that a try. So over on the desktop, I'm going to type 192.168.1.2 and hit enter and see what happens. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as you can see, there's first of all an issue. It doesn't know what the firmware is. We'll take care of that in a moment. But the first thing that I want to do is actually clean up the operating system. So we have to go to the machine. And then over here, there's going to be a couple of steps. This may take a second to do. So first thing you want to do is actually you want to update the packages. So you're going to click on the update manager right here. And this is going to take a few seconds to actually check for updates. And you notice how everything says invalid at the moment. The first step you're going to do is going to be the system down here, like I said a second ago. So we'll give that a try as soon as this finishes. You can see that it's actually working on it as we speak because it's now on the network right here. So as soon as this is done, we'll be able to do this. But uh, while that's actually going, what I'll do is I'll show you the other things that are going on. We're actually going to have to build the config file over here in a moment, but I'll show you that after we do this. So we'll click upgrade for system. And this may take a few seconds to do. And essentially it's going to grab all the information that updates the system for our particular version of bullseye, as it says up here. So as soon as this completes, you can do all the other ones at once or at least we hope we can. Sometimes it may change depending upon the time at which you try this tutorial yourself because over time things do change with software. So let's give this a moment more and hopefully it'll allow us to actually work on it, but it looks like we're at 42% and counting. So hopefully this will finish up soon. So while this is going on, what I'll do is I'll bring up the actual firmware page for this particular board that we're working with so we can actually grab the file. So over here on the Big Tree Tech website for GitHub, what we're going to do is we're going to search on our board. So we go to repositories and we're going to type Octopus. And the reason that we're doing this is to find the configuration file that they've already built for you. So as you can see, it's the Octopus Max EZ. So we'll click on that. And what we'll do is we'll go to firmware and there's a clipper folder here. And this is the generic actual configuration for the board. So we'll deal with this in just a second, but we're gonna pop back over and see what's going on here. So it looks like we're about 41% installed since it actually pulled the update. So I'm going to switch back over here and explain a little bit of this. This is based on the pins configuration for your board. And what I mean by that, if we duplicate this for a second, I'm going to go back to, let's see, the octopus, go to hardware. And right here we have a pinout diagram someplace. And this will show what each one of these pins relates to on your board. So as you can see, there's end stops over here. And we have PF0 is our min1, which is going to be right here. So if we were to go back over here and we were to look for PF1, which is going to be in your x-axis, hopefully it'll be in here. So let's see, there's these are the actual stepper pins and then we have an end stop pin which is pf0 so let's double check that 
So it's actually PF0 right here and PF0 right here, so that's correct. So now that we understand that, this is already pre-thought out for us, so we can work with this at our leisure. There will be special configurations that you have to do for different steppers, which I'll show you in the future. But for now, you can see that there's some information up here that has to do with the actual building of your firmware. So you can see that the processor is an STM32H723. That is what's written on the center of your MCU, which I'll show you real quick. Over in here, you have your MCU and the writing on it. If I zoom in on it real quick here, let me uh, find the button for it real quick. You can see that it says STM32H723 and then there's a ZET6 underneath it. That's important in case they make a variable build. So let's go back to the desktop. And on the desktop, we're gonna double check on this real quick. It looks like it's completed, so it may wanna reboot, but let's do the update all and see what happens. Hopefully this will work and it won't be too long. And essentially what we're doing is we're updating all of these right here. But if you don't do this one first for your system, everything else will be a mess. So let's see what we get going to be a bit so let's just jump over here for a sec and look at some more stuff so as you can see almost all the pins are allocated here you can check them one by one if you want but uh, you can see that the actual motors correspond over here so you can see that there's a ground pin a PC6 a PG6 and a PC8 and then a PG7 CS stands for chip select, EN stands for enable, step is your step, and then dir is direction. So I just wanted to point that out, and you're also going to need to know where your thermistors are, because this won't function initially unless your thermistors are correct. So you can see that it's THB. THB is over here, that's thermal heat bed. Then we have the TH0, which is right here, and that's thermal hot end zero. And obviously there's three more after that, but counting usually begins at zero and then increments up thereafter. So let's check on our main sale. Apparently it finished, so we'll do try again and see what's going on here. It looks like it's downloading something, so this is actually longer than I thought. So we'll give this a second more. You can see that they're saying up to date down here. So let's try close and see what happens. And it looks like we're actually up to date. So that's good. So let's go back over to here and we're going to copy the raw file. Then we have to go over here and we have to create it. So it's going to be called Let's see, let's find where we can create it. That's directory and that's create file. So we're gonna call this printer.cfg and then we're gonna hit enter and CFG is config by the way. So now we're gonna find the file here and we're gonna hit control V and it's gonna paste our actual configuration for our entire pins file here. So when we do the build, we'll have to pay attention to this. But for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you what I like to do to make this simpler. We're gonna find the MCU in this file and put it at the very top. So we're gonna copy the line below and the tag above or label above, depending upon how you call it. And we're gonna place it up here. This just simplifies your life later on in case things change. But this is our MCU, and that's the processor in the center of the board that I showed you a moment ago. So we're gonna save and restart. Now, if you go to the dashboard, there's still gonna be an error. So we're gonna to have to actually build the firmware because it's not currently built. So let's go over to the desktop for a moment. I'm gonna to have to pop out this little drive right here, 
And this is going to get a little bit interesting in a second. So I'm going to have to open up TerraTerm to connect to this. So I'm going to place the drive in here and place it in the computer. So inside TerraTerm, I'm going to go to File, New Connection. And in here, I'm going to change the IP address to 192.168.1.1. Dot two, just like in our web browser. Now our port is going to be 22 if it's not written there already and it's SSH meaning secure shell. So what we'll do now is we'll try and connect. You're going to say continue for the security warning. Then we're going to have to put in the password so it's going to be pi for the username and then the passphrase is going to be raspberry and then we're gonna say, okay. So if it works, you'll see this next. So now what we need to do is actually go to the web browser for a second, and we're gonna go to the actual install and configuration. So we'll click here, and the directions for this are kind of simple. We're already set up, so we don't have to do this step right here for preparing the image. It's already done for us, but we will have to do this. So I'm gonna copy this, Go over to the browser and paste these two commands and then hit enter so that the second command occurs. Now, like I said before, we're going to have to pay attention <clears throat> excuse me, to the top right here for our processor type and of course our bootloader and then our clock. So let's take a look at this in TerraTerm. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the low level configuration by hitting spacebar. Then I'm going to arrow down to the microcontroller. This is not an 8-bit controller, so we'll right click or right arrow, pardon me. Then we'll say STM32 and hit spacebar. So now that that's set, we'll go down here and we'll check our model. So it's STM32H723, I believe. So we'll right arrow. And then we'll scroll down and see if we can find that. So that appears to be our processor. So we'll hit spacebar. And then as you can see, this is already set correct for 128. So we'll go to the clock, right arrow again, and it's a 25 megahertz clock. So that looks like we've got it all set. Now there are other things down here you can configure. You can do these on your own. I just wanted to show you the basic configuration using USB that's already specified. So I'm gonna hit escape, and then I'm gonna hit the Y button to save it. Now to actually build this, per the instructions over here, it's gonna say that you need to do a make. So in order to do a make, we'll go back over here and we'll type make, and then enter. And so this will build our firmware for us. So in order to get the firmware off this, we're going to have to remote into this. So I have FileZilla down here, which I'll put in the link in the description with all the other software that I've used so that you can do this as well. So let's wait for the clipper.firmware, or excuse me, clipper.bin to appear. So you can see there's clipper.elf, and then the other one should show up in a second because it's linking it as we speak. So there it is. So it's not firmware.bin at the moment. So let's go over to FileZilla. Inside FileZilla, we're not connected yet, so the host name is gonna be 192.168.1.2. The username is gonna be pi, and the password is gonna be raspberry. And then the port is gonna be 22 like before, and then we'll do quick connect. We'll say okay to this, and then down here to find it, we have to go to the clipper folder, then we have to find the out folder, which is right here, and then you'll see the clipper.bin here. That's our actual firmware. So I'm gonna to have to copy this over to my downloads folder, so what we'll do is we'll pull it over here. I probably already have one here, so I'm gonna overwrite it. 
and then I'll show you what to do when we go over to that folder. So if we open this up and go to downloads, you'll see it right here and the time at which I did it. So in order to use this, let me delete this file for a second. We're going to have to right click and we're going to have to say rename. So we're going to say this is firmware dot bin. So now it's a correct name format for the actual computer to understand it on the MCU for the Octopus Max EZ. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to do send to and send it to the E drive. We can check this now that it's been copied over to it. So now what we're going to do is go back over to the desktop. I'll pull it out of the computer and I'll insert it in here. So once it's inserted in here, we're going to have to power the board with the PSU. So I'm going to have to plug it in. So I'll plug it in and it will load the firmware. Now I know this is a lot of steps, but I do have to show you these because they are important. So I'm going to connect the USB here for now to the Raspberry Pi 4. And I'm then going to connect the USB-C here. So in order to do this, we have to actually connect to it via TerraTerm. So we're going to go back over to the desktop. We're going to go to TerraTerm. And inside TerraTerm, we're going to have to follow these instructions down here. So we're going to have to ls or list the directory for the dev serial by ID and the wildcard is anything in that folder. So we're going to copy that command. We're going to go back over here, right click and hit enter. This is the name of your MCU for your file inside the config. So I just right clicked and copied that. Now I'm going to have to go back over to our browser. We're going to go over to here, go to the machine. Then we're going to find our printer.config and I'm going to paste this below so you can see it real quick here. So I'm going to type serial colon space and paste. That is the connection to our actual octopus max ez so i'm going to save and restart this it's still going to have an issue so there may be several but you can see that it's reporting there's a shutdown so let's see it says adc is out of range that has to do with actual thermistors so we're going to go back over to the board i'm going to grab two thermistors just to demonstrate this is not normally how you do it, but this is an actual thermistor. It's a glass bead and it has two wires running through it. And the speed at which the actual flow occurs is how they measure the temperature or at least a rough approximation of the definition. So I'm going to plug this in for the heat bed and then I'm going to do the same with the second one for the actual thermistor. This is only to demonstrate how to do it. Your printer obviously will have these as well. So now that these are connected, what I'm going to then do is actually show you what it looks like on the computer. So let's go back over to the computer. We're going to try a restart and see what happens. And now it looks like we have another error. So let's see, it says something about the MCU. So we have to correct that issue. So I'm going to try restart firmware. If that doesn't work, then we'll try something else. But it looks like it just worked. So if we go over here, there's a couple of missing configs that we're going to have to deal with. Now, normally what you can do is you can point to the file. So in here it says make sure the include mainsail.config is in your printer config. So let's click more information. So apparently we want to do this. So we're going to copy that, go back over here, go to our machine, then we're going to go to printer config and we're going to put this line in right here. And then we're going to say save and restart and see if that error is still there. So the error is gone. You can see that we now have temperature readings right here. 
So what I'm going to have to do is test it. So I'm going to go over to the desktop for a second and show you what I'm going to do to test it. I'm going to grab one of the thermistors. This one's for the hot end and put my finger on it like this and then go back over to the computer. Now, as you can see, the temperature of my body is raising the temperature right here for the hot end. So you can actually see that it's the extruder for the thermistor. So we know it's working. And that's the same thing you can do to test the other one without having to power it up with heat. So if it doesn't work, it probably means it's not connected. So in future tutorials, I'll show you more of the configuration, but this gives you a basis to work with it currently. So at this moment, I'd like to thank my patrons as well as people on PayPal. And I've recently added buy me a cup of coffee, but I will place a thank you at the end of this video. So everyone take care, be safe, and I'll talk to you later.